Okay, so we've gone ahead now, we've checked our clearances on the exhaust side, on the intake side, we've gone over the insulation procedure for the camshaft, um, we've gone over the removal procedure for the camshaft, um, we've talked about why we only do one at a time when there's no uh, timing belt on the camshaft, um, valves will contact each other if you uh, rotate them at the same time, uh, or don't rotate them at the same time, and they will face each other, especially on a high lift camshaft with a plus one valve, the chances of contacting, you either bend the valve or crack the valve guide, um, both of which you do not want. So we removed our camshafts now. Next step here, we're gonna be installing the uh, actual head to the block. Um, we're gonna be using a Nitto 1.2 mil head gasket for the RB26. So pretty straightforward on the install of this. Uh, the Nitto head gasket is pretty uh, high quality, so we just have to uh, pretty much basically just place it on the block like that. Um, we're gonna go ahead now, remove our head from our stands, and then we're gonna place it on the block. So as we go to install the head onto the block, a um, couple things that uh, I like to consider just to guarantee you don't have any issues. Um, the RB26, um, any RB is an interference engine. So what that means is if the valve's all the way open, the piston's all the way up, um, they'll contact each other and uh, cause some damage. Just like the valves hit each other in the head, they can also contact the piston itself. Um, so what I like to do for uh, insulation is basically put the piston, um, number one, um, just as it's coming up, and then pretty much lining up cylinder one, three, four, and six, pretty much level with each other, called the safe zone. Um, that way if you install the head um, and you go to uh, torque down the camshafts and the valves do open, say you um, hadn't recognized which position it was in and it pushes the valve open, um, nothing to worry about as long as you have it in the safe zone and it's not, uh, say you're, you, know, you have the camshaft in and it's pushing down on number one valve and you have the number one cylinder piston all the way up. Um, they could contact each other, it could damage, you might not notice it. So just placing up that this guarantees that you're not gonna have any issues. Um, you can install the head, install the cams, and then we'll rotate the cam um, to the position it should be in for insulation. And then we'll rotate the crankshaft and put it into TDC once we know the camshafts are in the correct position. All right, so now that we've got the head uh, placed on the block, I'm just gonna put some rags in the valley. I don't have the spark plugs in. Um, so while I'm working with the head studs, I don't wanna drop anything in there um, and potentially ruin all of the work that we've done um, with a washer or a bolt or something falling in there. Um, so we'll just cover that up. Now we're gonna go ahead. We are going to install our head studs. Um, one thing we've done with the head studs here, just like we talked about in one of the previous videos, I've left it in the torque plate. Um, that way the positioning of each head stud goes exactly back to where it was when it came out. Um, we have our nice little handy arrow facing forward. We know it's front left, front right, so on. Um, so we're going to go ahead, we're going to ARP loop the head studs and then start placing them in the block um, just like that. Um, I do like to keep the assembly of the head stud just like this. It makes it a lot easier to install the stud, the washer and the nut all at once instead of trying to fish them onto the stud afterwards. Just again, make sure the nut is all the way at the top. And then we'll just ARP the threads and the washer. And then we'll drop it in the block. And then we'll just repeat the same process for all of them. And then we'll move on to the torque procedure. Okay, so now that we have all of our head studs plopped into the holes, um, we're just gonna tighten down our uh, studs into the block. Again, it's gonna be hand tight, you don't need to torque them, um, unless you want a more permanent install, but usually you don't, not with an RB. So we're just gonna run them all down in the block here, and then we'll go over the torque procedure for the nut. Okay, so now that we have all the studs down, we're gonna run our nuts all the way down snug, and then we'll move on to the torque procedure. Okay, so we're gonna move on now to torquing the head down. Um, ARP torque spec is 105 foot pounds. Um, I think we mentioned in the previous video though. Um, some people will have you believe that uh, 100 foot pounds is kind of the limit before you end up having a strain on the block and it end up causing cracking. Um, so we're just gonna stick to that. Um, we're only gonna run up to 100 foot pounds, which is plenty. Um, it leaves you a little bit of room. And it's better to be safe than sorry. Um, I have personally ran the head stud uh, up 
to a higher torque just to see how far we could take it and I didn't really find a limit. Um, so uh, for this step now though, we're gonna do uh, 100 foot-pounds. It says divided it by three, we'd like to do four just because it's such a high torque. So going up by 25 foot-pounds at a time makes it easier. You don't have to do massive turns um, to get it to uh, torque down. So we're gonna start with 25. And then again, just like we did in the uh, torque plate section from the middle, work your way outward in a crossword pattern. Um, while we're in this position here, with our cylinder head bolted on fully, we have our uh, cams removed. Um, you've set up the perfect scenario to do a leak down test on all six cylinders without having to rotate the crank. Um, so we're going to go ahead, we're just going to check number one, and then we'll carry on through the rest of them. Um, but I like to do this just to, you know, do we have a good seal, our valve seal, our ring sealing, um, without having to break in the engine. Um, we'll kind of know what we're looking like before we even start it. Um, so first off, we've got our tool set here just to the zero mark. And then now uh, we're just gonna go ahead and insert it. We got about, uh, what is that? 13% leak down. We're well below in the low range. Um, for an engine that has absolutely no braking time on it, um, that's really, really, really good. Um, I have seen this end up a little bit higher in some scenarios um, on an engine that has not been broken in yet. Um, so we'll, so far, so good. Um, we'll just repeat the process um, that we've done here for the rest of them just to uh, pretty much guarantee what we've done is a success and then uh, carry on with installing the cams. Now that we've completed our uh, leak down test, we can go ahead and install our camshafts. Um, pretty straightforward, we've already talked about this, so I uh, won't go over it again. Um, but again, insulation procedure, um, since you already are here, obviously we've talked about the safe zone of the crank location, um, more so of an oversight if you, if you happen to forget and you put the camshaft in the wrong position. Um, but uh, when you're going to install the cam, just like we've already talked about, um, for the RB26, or any RB really, um, you basically know it's in a uh, TDC if the little uh, divots inside the camshaft where the head bolts go, um, it's straight up and down. Um, so for this uh, situation here, we're just going to rotate a little bit, um, let it rest in the position that it wants to sit in, and then we'll go ahead, we'll put a little bit of assembly lube on top of each uh, cam journal, and then we'll install the camshaft just like we showed you earlier. So we are going to now tighten down the cams for the fourth time. We've already talked about this, so we'll just quickly brush over it again. Um, you're just gonna wanna tighten down the two with the most tension. Um, the front cam cap is just gonna be temporary installed. We have to still silicone it and install the um, front, or front cam seal. Um, I like to do the front cam seal. We'll talk about it later, just a different way than most people do, just cause it's easier to install it. Um, but for now, like I said, we're going to tighten down the ones with tension on them. It's gonna be these two. Um, Cam position, obviously you're gonna to have to have it in the TDC position for the camshaft. Um, easy to tell in RBs, the relief for the head stud uh, removal and insulation, um, notches here, just straight up and down, just like you would install it. Um, and then you can go ahead and you can tighten down the two with the tension. You're gonna to wanna to pay attention to the thrust portion of the cam as well, make sure that is going down square. Otherwise it will bite in the cylinder head and cause some damage. Okay, so now we're going to go ahead and we're going to torque the cam caps down for the final time. A um, couple things to note, obviously. Um, these two we're going to do last um, after we torque the rest. i got to do the seal and still and the seals. Um, we'll talk about that here in a second. Um, but for now, um, torque spec is 7 to 8 foot-pounds or 1 kilogram meter like Tomei says for their studs. Okay, so we're going to be installing the cam caps for the final time now. A um, couple things to note right here, this area and this area here, um, that's where you put your silicone sealant. Um, there's a little area here where oil can leak out the sides on the cylinder head because the valve cover gasket um, doesn't seal this area so oil can come right across here and leak out the front. Um, so 
Um, this little groove here just basically guarantees you don't get any silicone on the uh, mating surface of the cam cap. And then a lot of people think these are drains. They're actually just, like I just stated there, the drain is actually in the front of the head. Okay, just like we've been doing, cleaning every surface and drying. And then we're gonna place our silicone just a little bit. You don't need a lot here. Like I said, you don't wanna affect how it may, uh, mates to the cylinder head. So usually you can just put a dab on one side. Make sure your hand's clean. Just make sure you can spread it out between the two. Should be plenty of silicone to go around. Again, you don't need much, just enough to seal it. So we'll go ahead, we'll place our cam seal. This saves a lot of time in damaging the seal or uh, trying to fight with it around the camshaft. So you can just put it onto your cam and then you can slide the seal all the way back. It goes in really, really easy. We don't have the cap on there. Just press it down into the cylinder head. Keep it flat, square against the head. Then once you have your seal installed, you're just gonna wanna go ahead and make sure you clean the area where the silicone will be sealing. Um, since we've been working with assembly lube, there might be a bit of oil on the surface. Just clean both sides, make sure it's dry. Then you can go ahead and you can install your cam cap. And you're just gonna wanna make sure that the seal is square. Press your cam cap into place. You can go ahead and install your bolt or your nut, whatever uh, hardware you have here. And you can torque it down to the same specification as the rest. That's a clean, simple way to install that without having any sort of issues. Um, you can see only a little bit of silicone has squirted out at the side. Um, just like in this little channel that we talked about here, it's gonna stop the silicone from squeezing underneath the cam cap mating surface itself. And uh, gives you a good seal, long lasting, and uh, we'll carry on, repeat the same step for the rest. Now that we have our head bolted to our block here, we have our cam seals installed. We're gonna go ahead now, we're gonna put the timing components on. Um, that way we can go ahead, we can rotate the crank, uh, rotate the engine over, make sure we have our valve lashes set like we discussed earlier. Um, just make sure they're as expected. And then we'll move on to the final assembly of everything else. Um, the cylinder head video was a little bit, uh, it was quick, it was brief. Um, we'll do a complete cylinder head video um, more in depth um, about all the details and clearances of the cylinder head um, in another video. Um, this project, I uh, kind of just want to get her finished up and we'll just go ahead and show you guys the rest of the assembly process and uh, show you the finished product and then we'll move on to the next. Okay, so we're going to start assembling the uh, timing belt and the timing components. Um, first thing we have to do before we put anything on the head though is we're going to plug the front oil ports here um, that we have drilled and tapped. So like the rest of the ones in the block, just a little bit of purple Loctite just to seal up any sort of gaps that there may be. Um, again, just in the middle, you don't want to get any Loctite flowing into the oil gallery. And then we're just gonna run it in front. Just like that. Clean off any excess Loctite. And then repeat for the other side. Okay, once you have those installed, we'll go ahead now and we'll install our pointer. Uh, our client has uh, decided he does not want to have the timing plate in the back. Um, he does have the PRP valve covers, so the OEM plate looks a little funny in front of those. Um, so we're gonna go ahead, we're gonna install the timing plate instead. This basically just points to uh, where the cams need to be when you're installing the timing belt. Okay, so we're gonna be installing the uh, cam gear pointer. Um, a couple things to note on this. The little washers they include are offset. Um, they have a little hex head on them. So you're gonna rotate it to get the cam pointer to sit where you need it to. Um, so what I'm assuming is, uh, I don't think they have any instructions yet, but the uh, cam pointer will have to be positioned in the area where you want it to sit um, once you have the timing belt on and uh, you know where it needs to stay and you can tighten this down. Because we have the uh, front oil gallery plugs in here, we had to notch this uh, front pointer plate a little bit here just to clear them. Um, so we've already done that. We're gonna go ahead now just to put a bit of Loctite on threads. Okay, so now that we have the plate installed, um, a couple things, obviously. Um, the plate has some adjustment to it. 
Um, so what we've done is we've installed the cam gears. Um, I pretty much just placed the cam gear on to the cam for both sides. Now because there is some adjustment, this is able to go up and down. So what we've done is we've basically just taken the belt with the factory marks on it. We've lined up the belt marks on both sides. And then I brought the pointer upward, um, whatever the four or five mil that it needed in order to line that up. Um, I'm gonna put the cam gears on, I'll put the crank gear on, put the whole belt on, see how it lines up when it's 100% um, TDC. Technically, you don't really need the pointer on the RB because it does have the belt with the marks on it. Um, we can get it all lined up without having any, any concerns. Um, but for now, um, we've got it lined up for where we think it should be. We're just gonna go ahead, we're gonna torque these down. Um, the M6 one, because it's M6, I would guess six to seven foot-pounds for a torque spec. So we're just gonna run it right to seven. Remember Loctite, this is an area where it can fall into the timing components. So you're just gonna wanna make sure you're set to at least six or seven foot-pounds. And then for the other one, we we'll run that one up to 14 foot pounds. And that should be good to go now. Um, we'll continue with installing the cam gears now. We'll put on the PRP uh, trigger gear and then slap our belt on. Okay, so um, our client here has a PRP trigger kit going on. Um, so before we go ahead and install the gear in the belt, um, because our client is going to have to bolt this piece here, lower section on when he gets his engine, um, we're just gonna make it easy for him. We're just gonna notch out the oil pump before we um, put the gear on. That way you don't have to run a grinder near your oil pump. Um, so what we're gonna do, we're just gonna cover up all the stuff in the area here. We'll cut this out, notch it, and then we'll test fit this, uh, make sure we have enough clearance, and then we'll go ahead and uh, assemble the rest of the timing components. Okay, so we're gonna notch the oil pump front here. Um, I like to just do two 90 degree cuts, top and, and front, and then we'll go ahead with the die grinder and we'll round it out afterwards. Okay, now that you got it notched out, um, we've gone and just quickly done a, a test fit. We have pretty good positioning, so now we'll we'll be able to just clean up the rest of the debris on here. Um, there's always gonna be a little bit, and then we'll go ahead, we'll test fit it completely, and then move on to installing the crank here. Okay, so now that you've got your uh, well pump notched on here, we're just gonna remove these two bolts temporarily, and we're gonna test fit. Okay. Okay, so we've notched enough out here. We have enough clearance on all four sides. Um, when you go to install this, there is a couple of washers on the on the trigger kit that may need to be washed or shimmed in and out, depending on the alignment of the gear itself. Um, for this case, we're all the way in. We have as much clearance as we need, um, both top and bottom. Um, so we're good on that front. We can remove this and continue on with the installation of the gear. Okay, so now that we're ready to install our gear, um, we're gonna be installing the Nissan Woodruff key. Um, these are available on our website as well. Just one of the small little components you don't usually think of when you're doing a new build just gets placed into the crank alignment gear or into the crankshaft snout. Sometimes it can be a little bit tight so you're going to want to just tap it into place. I like to use a brass drift um, because if you've ever worked on an RB and uh, you've dealt with a damaged woodruff key you know how annoying that is. So this is a little bit softer than it. Okay so once you have your woodruff key in, go ahead and install your crank gear. I like to just put a little bit of either anti-seize or ARP lube in there just so it slides on nicely. Um, and if you do ever have to remove it, it does come off a little bit easier. Just a little, little small amount. Okay, before you put your crank gear on, you got to put on the uh, um, timing, uh, timing belt guide plate. Um, this does have an installation direction. Um, two things to note, the chamfer on the inside um, on the 26 always faces inward and then as well as the outside chamfer curves this way away from the timing belt. So that's gonna face inward like that. And then once you have that installed, you can install your crank gear. Just like that. Um, we'll be removing this a little bit after um, to slip the belt in as well. Um, so we're just gonna leave that there for now. Um, so next up, we're gonna be installing the cam gears. 
Um, these are just Tomei cam gears. They are intake and exhaust specific. Um, so we're going to install the intake one. The exhaust one here, um, our client is going to have the uh, PRP cam gear pickup trigger on here. So we're just going to place that one on there. Um, we're going to be using the factory hardware, but that'll be coming off at a later date uh, for the installation. Okay, so first off, we're going to be installing the intake cam gear. Um, he's just using a uh, brand new OEM hardware for this position here. Um, we're going to have all four of these ones installed with Loctite. The other four we're just going to install without Loctite because he's going to have to change the hardware anyways. We don't want there to be any sort of issue removing those. The torque spec for these bolts here are going to be 14 foot-pounds and they're 11 mil socket. Because it's a high lift cam, it is uh, not as easy to turn. So holding this by hand does work. Um, if you have an OEM cam, it might turn while you do to try to tighten this to hold it. So you may have to hold the cam with a, uh, a wrench just on the back side here. Now just like we've been doing before, once it's torqued, make sure you paint pens so you know you've done it. And then we'll move on to the exhaust side. Again, no lock head on the exhaust side. We're just going to be installing them as is because they have to be removed. And we'll torque it down. We're not going to paint pen these ones just so it's more obvious that they need to be removed. Um, you won't be able to start the engine without the uh, trigger pickup anyways. Okay, those four are good, tight, so we can install the timing belt. Now the uh, Tomei timing belt, the uh, Gritty timing belt, the OEM Nissan timing belt all come with the uh, timing marks. Um, so it's actually very, very easy to install these timing belts um, as opposed to other manufacturers who provide zero marks um, aside from uh, anything on the actual physical block or head. Now there is a timing mark on the gear. Um, this is a bit of an older PRP gear, so it is just like a drilled hole that tells you which tooth is the uh, TDC tooth. Um, to make things easier, you can just line that up with the belt before you slide the gear on. One thing you can do to make your life a little bit easier is rotate this timing gear all the way away. And then you can tighten down this nut that's here. And just tighten that down snug just so it doesn't turn back. Just like that. That'll make it easier for you to put the timing belt on. Okay, once you have the timing belt slipped onto the engine, you're going to want to make sure again here, this timing mark is aligned. This timing mark on this side is aligned. And then the one down the bottom is aligned with the mark on the crank gear, which it is. So we know that, that timing position is correct. 